Good afternoon. Now, we just already saw in the last video, I did a short video dealing with uh, what Robert Baker considers a biblical society. That's what he con considers the, the Confederacy a biblical society, because he, con he considers slavery part of that biblical society. He puts that in there. He says that's a biblical society. And he praises the 1800s. But then he'll tell you he's, he's against slavery. And he is one of slaves. Well, according to you, that's a biblical society. He's two-faced. He's a liar. The fact that God allowed slavery, and every time he keeps reading slavery in those verses, the word is servant. But the fact that God allows something doesn't mean he's for it. It's called the permissive will of God. But you see how this guy's mind works. So what else do we see? He said First Timothy, uh, first, uh, first Timothy six one. See what else he has to say. So he's got servants under everybody, slaves. He has parenthesis slaves. He changed the word servant to slave. Now according to him, he's not looking at the context. He's looking at the, the word doulas from his other video. Let's see what he says here. It is the head of the family. The wife is under the husband. The children are under him, and if they have slaves, if there are servants, the servants are to obey. And this is March, just the recent people, this is March 21st, uh, 2017. He considers slavery part of a biblical society and the 1800s as the ideal. Do you understand that, what he's saying there? That's why his mind is warped. They're masters. This is the way, the hierarchy, if you will. This is the then way. Then we don't have, you know. The millennium won't be an ideal society, people. Because there won't be slaves in the millennium. Do you understand that? There's no slavery in the millennium. Oh, God allows slavery. Well, God allows a lot of things that are bad. But they won't be they won't be in the millennium. The way that God set it up. And we looked at last time how the devil has done everything he can to destroy it. Because he doesn't want it this way. But let me go through a couple of Paul's epistles. And again, let's look and we'll see this order repeated over and over and over again. Paul telling us that this is the doctrine that God would have for the world and for Christians. And this is how it should be. A sh slavery. Slavery for Christians, people. Get that. He just said it. 652 in. This is the doctrine that people would have. The order that God would have in there. Slaves for Christians. Strong family unit in which the man is the head of the family and the wife submits to the husband, the mm -hmm. children submit to the wife and the husband, mm -hmm. and the servants are slaves. What? If they have them, thank God we don't have that today. Huh? But during the time, the slaves were to submit to their masters. Now, I'm going thank into God we don't have it today, but you call, you call that a biblical society. He goes, thank God we don't have it today. But he said the 1800s was the ideal. See how he lies? See how he lies? Well, then the word servant, you got to take the word servant out of there. What does it mean? What does it mean in the context of today, Robert? What does servant mean in the context of today without slaves? Thank God we don't have it today. He said the ideal is the 1800s, and that's when they had slaves. This because today, as we get in chapter 6 of Timothy, the first five, six verses are all about what these servants are supposed to do, to yeah. believe. Yeah. And this whole chapter of chapter 6 goes all back to this, this thing, this doctrine, this setup in which man is in charge. And he has the... And this is the ideal. He's telling you this is the ideal. Paul was writing to a in the environment of a pagan culture, not in a Christian culture. See, he wants to make things the Confederacy was Christ a Christian culture. See, he was Christian. Therefore, slavery was legitimate because it was part of some Christian culture. Paul is writing to people in a pagan culture where slavery was practiced on a normal basis. It was, it was, it was, it was one thing, it wasn't racial in the Roman Empire. The Confederacy was the first nation that made it racial people. That's something these liars won't tell you about. 
the first nation, if you want to call it a confederacy a nation, was the first was the, was the first people, first group that made slavery racial. They don't have just the word slavery in the in the word in the in the Constitution. People, they had the word Negro slavery, not just the word slavery. They don't have the word just the word slavery in their Constitution, where they can take their slaves anywhere. They have the word Negro slavery. Remember that? Woman under him, the children under them, and the servants under him. This was God's setup of a biblical society. So he has God's uh, 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 set up for a biblical society with slaves. With slaves. Now, do you believe that? You believe that God wants slaves in a biblical society? Paul wasn't writing to a biblical society when he was writing in Rome. But the Confederates took this and said, see, God allows slavery, so therefore it's part of a biblical society. You see how these guys' warped minds work? You see how twisted they are? Paul was, in the environment that Paul was writing in, the context, he was writing in, a, in context where slavery was normal. And you'd be born into slavery, or be captured into slavery, but it was not racial, it was, you know, circumstantial. Circumstances put you in slavery. But that wasn't a biblical society. The Confederacy wants you to believe they were a biblical society. That's what that's what Robert wants you to believe. They were a real biblical society, and their slaves there is legitimate. In fact, ideal. Because he, he said the eighteen hundreds was ideal. And they say, oh, we don't, I'm glad we don't have slavery today. Well, that word slavery, that, that word can't mean slavery then, because we're going to apply that doctrine to us. What, is it, what can it mean? That's regulating, Paul's regulating slavery in there about what, is, what a person's supposed to do. Because many slaves were getting saved. And what are you supposed to do? And he's telling Christians, he's telling the masters who also were getting saved, what are you supposed to do in relation to slavery? So you're slaves. But that doesn't mean the situation was ideal. He regulates divorce as well. He regulates divorce. That's not part of a godly society, a biblical society, divorce. It's not going to exist in the millennium. But this is the twisted, warped, perverted thinking of these guys. So let's stop with this up. Amen. Thank you.